The project in the shadows of the Shoah allowed all students to analyze the effects of the Holocaust on nations, communities, and most importantly, individuals. We focused on a certain um, personality which ranged from a different perspective during World War II. Um, such included from a, um, a Holocaust survivor's perspective, um, a Nazi commander, and also just um, German citizens. Our summary of task was an exhibition on the uh, different per historical personalities um, from the formative task and three groups would merge together and one would do post-war, one would do like during the war and one would do pre-war. We had to use techniques such as imagery, descriptive language and obviously narrative structure in order to complete that task working on their literacy skills. That was then transferred into the summative task where as a group they had to work together to create a realistic and authentic um, museum exhibit that explored the life of that person. We were given a category and we had to choose who we thought best suited that category. So for my group uh, we chose Richard Bayer who was a German ally and we also had to choose the artefacts that we thought best suited that persona that we chose. My group has been focusing on a man named Eddie Jacku. He's been, um, he was a German slash uh, Jewish prisoner during, in the Auschwitz camp. And he had a very prominent, like not really prominent, but like very interesting life because he has been, been chased for a decade, like literally a decade, so 10 years of like running after um, running away from German soldiers. Our end product was a museum exhibition, but what really makes this different is that usually when you come to school you uh, have someone working on it. Instead, we actually are setting this up for parent-teacher interviews since it's the last week of the term, so that means um, we can't uh, stay there and maybe tell people, so it really has to speak for itself. And this really brings in the symbolic value. In the project that we did, uh, we had some challenges that we were faced with. Um, some of these challenges were um, quite difficult to overcome. So one of them was information and resources. Because the, the time period that it was in and also what happened when the camps were liberated, a lot of the information was destroyed. So it was hard to find information about different people. Well, we got the opportunity to Skype the curators of the Melbourne Museum and get some ideas of how to create an exhibition and how, to, how do we go about um, choosing the artifacts that are right and how we can make an impact on our viewers. It gave us a, a real life perspective instead of just uh, staying in the classrooms and watching videos and doing modules. We got to have like unique Skype sessions with um, people who work at the Auschwitz Museum and we, we also got to create stuff um, on Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator and also just create stuff with our hands. Yeah, we got some tra a train list, so there you go. So this is, this, is all the, this is all the Jewish people that went on the train, which I found fascinating. And the, the other one thing I found that, that, that was gold is um, a certificate of Eugene Black. So this is, um, it talks about his age, his personality, everything before they took him in. So what we really wanted to do for this project Shadows of the Shoah was to expose our students to the real experts in the field. Uh, we're teachers and we are content experts but we don't know everything uh, about our subject area and, and sometimes we need to bring in the experts to uh, ensure our students have a really thorough understanding of the content in which they're engaging. So we did this in a number of ways through the Shadows of the Shoah project. One way that we did this was by incorporating uh, an expert into our entry event. So Jan Lenacek is a, an expert in the Holocaust. He's a, a lecturer at UNSW and he was very kind to Skype in for our, uh, our entry event to expose our students to their first understandings of, of World War II and of the Holocaust. And he did that in a way that was so accessible for our students by uh, creating an analogy of uh, the Harry Potter books to uh, the experiences of those who endured the Holocaust. And that was a great way for our students to be able to ask questions of someone who is an expert in their field. Another way that we tried to incorporate experts um, and external experts in our project was through uh, the Skype that Miss Cleveringa organised with uh, the Auschwitz Memorial uh, in Poland. And this was a, a very unique experience for our students who uh, many of them had never travelled overseas. So they were able to, to Skype in 
uh, to one of the museum guides over there in Poland who was on a 4G tablet and he walked us around the entire grounds of Auschwitz I and that was just a, such a moving and powerful experience for our students to be there effectively and to be able to ask uh, questions of that guide uh, and to experience what uh, what that concentration camp was like um, and I can't express how powerful that experience was. Another way that we tried to engage experts uh, into our project was through Museums Victoria who were a terrific resource for us. Uh, our students were required to design museum displays and this is something that they've never done before and, and something that certainly us as teachers we're, we're not experts in. So we put a call out to Museums Victoria and asked for their support. And our students design questions uh, around what makes a good museum display and what kinds of artefacts would tell a good story and how do we ensure that our narratives of our personalities that we're examining are, are personal narratives and really do touch the heart and, and tell that person's story effectively. And our students were able to put those questions to Museums Victoria who were able to use examples via Skype uh, of how they've done similar things in their own museums and they also showed our students how to make their museums interactive. Uh, and without their support and their guidance, our students' end products would not have been as, as powerful or as, as effective as they, as they were. So I think incorporating external people into PPL projects is a must. It's something that really elevates the project and, and ensures that our student work uh, is of the highest quality. I think one of the great aspects of this project has been the outside experts that Kurt and Maddie organised. So as part of the entry event, we had a university professor talking to the boys. Um, Maddie organised a Skype session with Auschwitz, which is, you know, an amazing opportunity. There was a Skype session with the uh, Museum of Melbourne. So there's been all these outside experts that have really added to the authenticity of the project. And the boys have just loved having that um, expertise. They've been very keen and they've really taken on board the information and the advice they got from those. And again, I think that's been well represented in their summative tasks.